Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I want you to picture this scenario. Suppose you're Alvin Kamara. You're one of the best running backs in all of football, having made the Pro Bowl in each of the past four seasons. You're having an incredible career and are a key part in the New Orleans offense. And then all of a sudden and seemingly out of nowhere, Sean Payton comes up to you and says, surprise, you're now playing tight end for us. You're no longer our starting running back. And he's being completely serious. Obviously, a scenario like this seems completely absurd. Why would you convert a really good running back to a separate position? Better yet, how many running backs even have the build to play tight end in the first place? However, I bring this up because as crazy as it might sound, this actually happened back in 1968. The San Francisco 49ers converted their starting running back to tight end, and it actually went somewhat surprisingly well. This is the story behind the bizarre end to John David Crow's career in the National Football League. Before I talk about the switch, we need some context to understand who John David Crow is, because it will help us to understand why this move was so shocking in the first place. In 1958, the Chicago Cardinals drafted John David Crow with the second overall pick in the NFL Draft, and it makes sense why they did it. He was the best player in college football and was projected to have a great career in the NFL. Crow was the reigning recipient of the Heisman Trophy. There were lofty expectations for him to live up to, but it's safe to say that he did that and then some. Throughout the 1960s, there were few players in the NFL more electrifying and dynamic than John David Crow. He made the Pro Bowl three times with the Cardinals and led the league in yards from scrimmage during the 1960 season, when he had 1,533 yards over the course of 12 games, which comes out to an average of over 127 per game. It's the pace line of someone who would have over 2,000 yards from scrimmage in a 16-game season. He led the league with 5.9 yards per carry in 1960 and was a threat in both the running and receiving game. This was at a time where running backs weren't really known for their hands and for their ability to make plays happen in the passing game. But Crow was really solid in that department, and consistently ranked as one of the top receivers on the Cardinals. Crow was unhappy with the Cardinals, though, as he limited his workload in 1964 due to injuries. With that, Crow requested a trade, and he got his wish, getting traded to the San Francisco 49ers in exchange for cornerback Abe Woodson. With the Niners, his career got a second life. In 1965, Crow made the fourth and final Pro Bowl of his career after posting over a thousand yards from scrimmage and finishing inside the top 10 of the league in receiving touchdowns. The Niners had the top offense in football that year, averaging over 30 points per game, with quarterback John Brody leading the league in touchdowns with 30 and in passing yards with over 3,100. And one of his go-to targets was Crow. He was a key part in San Francisco's dynamic offense that year and would continue to play well in 1966 and 1967 averaging somewhere in the ballpark of 60 yards per game over those two seasons. However, after a disappointing end to the 1967 season, where the Niners started 5-1 and dropped six of their final eight games to finish at 7-7 and and miss the postseason, head coach Jack Christensen was fired and was replaced by Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator Dick Nolan. And Nolan had a bizarre idea of how to use Crow and utilize his talents even more. Entering the 1968 season, the Niners had three tight ends on the roster. The top guy on the roster was Monty Stickles. He was drafted by the team in the first round of the 1960 NFL Draft, and had been the team's starting tight end throughout the 1960s. However, there were three problems with Stickles heading into 1968. Number one, he was on the wrong side of 30. Now on its own, that's not a problem. We've seen guys play into their 30s at a high level, and the subject of our story himself, John David Crow, was well into his 30s by this point. But considering the fact that his numbers in receptions and yards had declined every year since 1964, that seemed to be a problem. He went from 40 receptions in 1964 to 35 to 27 to just 7 in an abbreviated season, and from 685 yards in 1964 to 343 to 315 to 86. Number 2, he was injured. He suffered a broken arm in a 1967 game against the Los Angeles Rams and missed most of the second half of the season. And number 3, he was in some legal drama as during the 1967 season, he was sued for $30,000 by a Playboy Bunny, who accused him of beating her up while at a nightclub. Stickles was ejected from the club after giving the victim permanent injuries. When you combine this with his age and his decline in play, no one didn't want to deal with Stickles, and they traded him to the New Orleans Saints. Stickles was no longer there, so the next man up was Bob Windsor. He was drafted by the Niners in the second round of the 1966 NFL Draft to bolster that position. And while he didn't play in 1966, he filled in once Stickles got injured in 1967, 
and he actually ended the season on a relatively strong note, recording multiple receptions in six of the team's final seven games. It seemed like Nolan was fine with allowing Windsor to take over the starting spot. The only problem? He was hurt, so that was out of the equation. The next man up after Windsor was Doug Cunningham, who was a bit of a hybrid type player. He had 56 touches during the 1967 season, being used sporadically as a running back and a wide receiver. The sixth round rookie, who was used as the team's kick and punt returner as well, had a notable performance to open up his career. When on opening day against the Minnesota Vikings, he had a 64 yard touchdown run to help the Niners win the game 27 to 21. The only problem, just like Windsor, he was also hurt. All three tight ends were either gone or injured. Dick Nolan had a problem on his hands, and in his eyes, the solution was simple. Let's convert this 33-year-old running back to tight end. What could possibly go wrong? I want to emphasize just how shocking this was, and how out of the blue everything about this roster move was. Again, Nolan, instead of just signing a free agent tight end, converted his running back, who had never played tight end, to tight end. And it's not like he did this in the offseason where Crow would at least have some time to learn the playbook and adjust his body and training regimen. He did this just days before the season started. Here's a season preview for the Niners released on September 3rd, 1968, just 12 days before the season opener against the Baltimore Colts. Crow was listed as the team's starting running back. Nowhere in there is there any indication that Crow is going to be playing tight end. But desperate times call for desperate measures, and no one spoke to Crow on September 4th, one day after that preview came out. Nolan gave Crow tapes of guys like Baltimore Colts tight end John Mackey and St. Louis Cardinals tight end Jackie Smith, both of whom would eventually become members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. As Crow said afterwards, I guess he's serious. And to make matters even crazier, the final preseason game against the Los Angeles Rams was September 6th. You have two days to unlearn everything you knew about being a running back and become a tight end. Good luck. It's almost like the Kendall Hinnon scenario from the 2020 season, where the Broncos had to play a wide receiver at quarterback, and Hinnon only knew about 24 hours beforehand that he was going to be thrust into the position. But during the preseason game, apparently Crow played pretty well. Dick Nolan was so impressed by Crow, in fact, that he said he was going to be the team's starting tight end from now on. We all know the real reason for this was because of injuries, but Nolan had a different reason. He said moving him to tight end, he doesn't get hit as often as he did as a running back. This could lengthen his life player-wise a little longer. Ah yes, because tight ends, who line up on the offensive line and then go over the middle to catch passes, don't get hit. That makes a ton of sense. Naturally, Crow laughed at this, saying, I don't know about that not getting hitting as often. Seems like I got hit a lot of times. If there's a difference, I haven't noticed. Still, Nolan believed in Crow's ability to switch positions a decade into his career and become the new tight ends of the 49ers. Despite the fact that Crow had to relearn the entire playbook and route patterns, and despite the fact that Crow was 33 years old and had no experience at the position, and despite the minimal time to make this change, the Niners were rolling into the season with Crow as their new tight end, to the shock of just about everyone. The end result? Amazingly enough, this plan actually worked. Honestly, the four Pro Bowls that Crow made are nice. The hole leading the league in yards per carry during 1960 by averaging close to 6 yards per attempt is a huge accomplishment. But what Crow did in 1968 might just be the best moment of his entire professional career, because this move had no business working the way that it did. Yet in 1968, somehow and against all odds, Crow was actually a pretty solid tight end. Before talking about that, I should note that by moving Crow to tight end, it allowed Ken Willard, the team's first round pick in the 1965 NFL Draft, to be involved in the offense more and get more touches at running back. That move seemed to pay off in a big way, as Willard finished the season as a pro bowler while recording a career-high 967 rushing yards and 1,199 yards from scrimmage. In fact, in 1968, Willard finished second in the NFL in rushing yards, only trailing Leroy Kelly of the Cleveland Browns. So moving pro to tight end had no negative impact on the running game at all. In fact, him playing the new position made the offense better in that department. But with regards to Crow's play as a tight end, he was really good. The Niners started the season off strong with a 2-1 record, and in both of those wins, Crow caught a touchdown pass, with one of them being a 50-yard touchdown from John Brody against the St. Louis Cardinals to give his team a 14-7 lead. By the time the season ended, he finished with 31 receptions for 531 yards, tying a career-high in receptions and posting a career-high in receiving yards. Crow actually finished the year as the second leading player on the team in receiving yards, only behind Pro Bowler and first team All-Pro Clifton McNeil. And his 531 receiving yards not only ranked inside the top 25 of the entire NFL, but ranked sixth amongst all tight ends. To be the sixth best tight end in football is obviously a really good thing, 
To do it in your first season at the position at 33 years old when you were a running back at the start of September is unbelievable. This was all good news for Crow. Maybe Nolan knew what he was doing. The bad news, however, was that this would not be the career-extending move that the Niners hoped for. At the conclusion of the 1968 season, John David Crow announced his retirement from football. It had nothing to do with being unhappy about the position change or the coaching staff or anything even close to along those lines. He was just ready to get out. He had played 11 years of professional football, and even though he said he felt that he could still help out the team and that he still had something left in the tank, he wanted to spend more time with his wife and kids. Nolan was understandably upset about the loss of somewhat of a football legend, saying we are not only losing a great player, but also an outstanding leader. And with that, the final season to John David Crow's storied career was that 1968 campaign, which without any context whatsoever, might be the strangest final season by any player of all time. Again, this guy was a star running back and a Heisman winner at that position. He was a contributor on the offense and started all 14 games for the Niners in 1967, playing the position he had played his entire life. And then he gets changed to tight end at the end of the 1968 preseason and not only accepts and embraces that role, but is surprisingly good at it and becomes one of the top tight ends of the National Football League. Imagine if he came back for one more year in 1969 and had a full offseason under his belt where he could appropriately prepare his body for the tight end position and learn a bit more about blocking. I don't know how good he would have been, but if he was as good as he was in 1968 where he was a raw 33 year old, I can't even imagine how good he would have been one year later with some actual experience under his belt. For many people, they remember John David Crow as a fantastic running back for over a decade and one of the greatest backs of the 1960s. But for some, they remember him as the Niners legend who selflessly ended his career as a surprisingly good tight end. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Monday and Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for a chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jaguar9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping on the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.